All right, guys. I swear you have not seen anything like this before, which is kind of regular for my channel, but this is going to be very exciting and full of period correctness and you are going to be completely and utterly disamazed which again is not new for the viewers of my channel anyway you might be asking yourself why do you have this goofy hat on well because today's topic is how to cut a slide for your guitar in the 1930s so what about all this well this doesn't just happen whether it's 1930 or 1923 um, I do this out of respect for the people that want to be cool like me and um, this is what you you faithful viewer subscriber would have looked like if you were trying to be like Ken in 1930 yeah high five bro high five right there put it there okay so how did the, all this madness start let me get chick flick teal pointer put away by the way that I don't think they had chick flick teal pointer in 1930 but uh, I would have found a way anyway I went to see Leo Kotke the other night. Yeah, the Leo Kotke. I have been waiting a very long time um, to see Leo Kotke. He is one of the premier uh, guitarists going back to the folk days of the 1960s. Now, if you've seen this album, this was produced by John Fahey. This was not... Leo Kotke's first album, besides some bootleg, this was right here. Do you see what that says right there? It says, thank you for listening, Leo Kotke, 23, that's not 1923, that's 2023. So how did I get this? Well, I went down and found first pressing of this. These are expensive. Don't blame me if you can find one. But Leo was playing some songs and he tells stories. And they're kind of Midwesty stories if you'll get the humor if you ever hear one. Uh, look up Leo Kotke. In fact, I think I'll try to give you a link up there to him telling some of his stories. But he will play his guitar and tell the story and then play some of the best guitar you've ever heard. So, it got to the end of the show. In the last song, I saw him reach down and pick up one of these things. And it was a bottleneck. But he was playing with his guitar enough to lead me to believe that the guitar he was playing all this fancy stuff on was not set up for a slide. And when something's not set up for a slide, a smooth, taperless slide might be better than something that has a taper like a bottleneck because having a taper introduces all levels of infinitism, algebraic, uh, calculi, something or other. None of that I ever um, understood after Mr. Um, what was his name? He threw me out of the class. So I took algebra twice in middle school, never passed one because I got thrown out of class both times. And um, I think this picture of Honest Abe up there that y'all wonder about why he has a cigarette on in his mouth might tell you why Mr. Lambert pitched me out of his class, not once, but twice. Anyway, moving along, where were we? So, oh yeah, algebraic equations in relationship to the taper of a glass bottleneck versus a metallic cylindrical hollow tube in relation to soil temperatures of the Nubian desert. Yeah, that's where we're at. So anyway, Leo Kotke of all people is struggling a little bit. So at the end of the show, I'm not going to tell you how, why, or what, 
but I ended up having a minute, I immediately traded off my Dunlop 226 heavy metal, not like Metallica, just regular, slide, handed it off, and what do you know, missing a slide, which I always have one, I looked and on the table was a slide to replace it that had been on the table while Leo Kaki was playing, inebriating someone but blessing me with a, I don't know, the essence of the event, I, whatever it is. Anyway, I picked this bottle off the table. Now, we're getting way off out in the weeds here. That cannot break. The universe will be disrupted if that breaks. So anyway, Leo saying what he's saying, always telling his story, said something key. He said, I got to play slide guitar with Sun House. Now, guess who Leo's friend and producer was? That's right, John Fahey. And guess who interviewed Sun House with David Evans in 1964? That's right, John Fahey. Nothing but the blues. Ledbetter book. Mike Ledbetter. The story's in here. You want to read it. Leo Kotke actually got to sit down and play um, slide guitar with Son House and um, Mississippi Fred McDowell. And you know what? I'm going to give you a, a couple links. I might have to slow down a little bit here to get the links in. But the first one is we built a Mississippi Fred McDowell themed guitar for Cody Harrell. Episode about how we did that is up there. And we also built a Sun House themed guitar, which Cody Harrell also has. He puts both of them in his regular shows. If you're in North Mississippi, you'll see him and hear him. The episode for that Sun House themed Cigar Box guitar is up there. They both, both guitars have a lot of uh, relics in them from places like where Sun House recorded for Paramount Records, where Alan Wilson, did Alan Wilson come into this? Yeah, they were all friends. David Evans roomed with Alan Wilson. Alan Wilson was the one who helped Sun House relearn his slide guitar. These people are all together. And then in this interview here, you will find out the Sun House mentioned Reuben Lacey. So there's parts of wood from Reuben Lacey behind Reuben Lacey's church. And we've talked about how I went up and found Reuben Lacey's church in Ridgecrest. Ooh, Rev Reuben Lacey right there. There's an episode about that. I'm burning through these cards, but there's so much history here. Boom. Up there. So watch that one. But there's kind of like a lineage here of Reuben Lacey playing slide guitar on the street, Sun House pretending to be a preacher, cussing him, and then picking up slide guitar, and then Reuben Lacey going to be a preacher uh, and going off into obscurity until David Evans found him and then found his musical track and also his style of preaching. There's been books about that. UCLA, um, Kendra, my daughter, who you saw on the Tuner's episode, Punk and Me, a few years ago. Let's look at that one. Now she's been going to that same school kind of thing, the evolution of it. Anyway, back to Leo Kotke. Leo Kotke said, how did I get a slide? Well, he said, you break a bottle, and then you rub it down on a sidewalk. Right then, I knew it. I am going to go back into the 1930s and show you how somebody who's walking around with any guitar they could get made out of anything they could get and playing slide music, just how they would have went about making a slide. Get ready to burn your fingers, get ready to cut yourself, uh, get ready to look for every reason why you enjoy modern life and how difficult it was back then. So let's go outside 
and do the 1930 treatment on this bottle that I picked off the table the moment that I handed a slide, Dunlop 226, in fact, off for Leo Kotke's next gig if he chooses to use it. Let's get outside. Okay, let's start off with the materials you would have needed. First off, a bottle with a neck on it. Check. Um, while we're here, we knew later on in life that Furry Lewis used a Royal Crown soda bottle neck. Now look at the size of that bottle neck in relation to this one. Furry Lewis was not a very big dude. Take that one to the bank. Now, so you got your bottle. This is 1930s. You didn't have this kind of strapparatus like to cut bottles with. You had to use whatever you had and that might have been anything from a sharpened nail to a mining cart track from that's like railroad ties for mining taken from the Dyke Gas District of the Lead King Mine in wonderful North Las Vegas, Nevada, cultural capital of the world, this thing ground down on this multi-use piece of scrap apparatus. We're going to call the common brick. Yeah, this is going to come in handy. You see the abrasive nature of this? It's not as abrasive as my personality, but we're working on it. So that's how you would have sharpened that up and got a little edge there. So yeah, you need a you need a, a brick or a sidewalk or something, and then you needed a heat source, which is canned heat. Sterno, now I will tell you something. If you find one of these that are, is full and you drop it, it will explode and spray its whatever 80-year-old contents on the floor and stain everything. So do not do this in the house and don't ask me how I know that. But sterno would have been important for you because face it you didn't have no kitchen to be doing this if you're carrying around a junky guitar looking like this in 1932 Ooh, ah. anyway there's going to be heat involved you need something not to burn your fingers you need something that is kind of like a stove top that you can put your sterno can in between like that you see that once you light it then you light it up you need a can that will hold hot water and then you need a can that will hold ice now I think ice was pretty hard to find in the Mississippi area in 1932 kind of like heat is pretty hard to find when you're on a paper route on a bicycle in Wisconsin in January now there are a number of skills that you need to have to pull this off let me show you the first one the first thing you need to be able to do is take one of these farmer matches and drag it across the ass end to your bibs and light it up like this I still got it I still got it now you take that match and light up your sterno container and let that get going and you put some hot water on here like this and then of course you want to make sure that you have your glove to handle the can because I don't think you were carrying around a means of fixing pots and pans unless you're a tinkerer and that's what that was called next thing is you would take your sharp scrap apparatus and with a steady hand and a roll of the bottle like this you would score the bottle until it looked like this yeah I did this whole thing with this you know it okay looks like I gotta go to confession on Saturday but whatever moving along Okay, now once my water is sufficiently hot and I have ice water here, you don't want to confuse these two as to which glove goes on. Consult the Michael Jackson one glove use manual. 
that was in bad taste so what's new anyway I put a little kink in there and I'm gonna pour the hot water onto the score line of the bottle here like so and get that nice and hot and when I go all the way around like that I'm gonna try to focus it while I'm burning my hands and feet on that score line there and then I'm gonna immediately dip it into the ice cold water and I'm gonna do that a couple more times Alright, that was the easy part, now the rough part. We don't have a belt sander, we don't have sandpaper, so we're off to the nearest block wall or sidewalk. Hey, have you ever seen that restaurant video called Concrete? It's right up there right about now. Anyway, I got about 30 years of work to do on this thing. All right, there we go. Hey, period correct 1930s bottleneck slide. Uh, I would have never done this without the uh, prompting of a comment again from Leo Kotke. Get this album if you can. It's a good one. Um, he does 12 string guitar work. He's got a lot, a lot of albums out, but some of them are just instrumentals, just him and a guitar, and it's great stuff. Now, we're going to close this out with a real treat. We're going to do a little bit more work on this, and, and uh, then we're going to get it to somebody you all know. Uh, and that is Frank Goldwasser, and he is going to give it a go, the slide, on a period correct guitar, that being the Archcraft Junk Pile. I have a playlist. I'm probably out of cards pretty soon, uh, but there will be one at the end of the episode um, in the closing screen. You all know this guitar, and we'll have... Frank play this just acoustically and also plug in the amp. So, hey, thanks for watching. I really enjoy getting into the history part of it. Remember, if you can make the connection between Sun House and Reuben Lacey and John Fahey and Leo Kotke and all that, um, you're going to find this to be interesting because... If it wasn't for the British people finding these old records and then releasing them and somebody going, wait a minute, I've heard that before. And the resurgence of the uh, 20s, 30s, especially early blues players, we would not be uh, talking here today. So, hey, take it away, Frank, with your new slide. <laughs>